Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to be talking about why I use reference materials and why you should too. Okay, so um, using reference materials is important because you're going to want to establish a uh, proper framework onto your painting, especially when you're trying to paint some realism, especially and most importantly when you're trying to paint reproductions such as this one. And this one is, is a reproduction of the death of Socrates. And so um, I'll be use, using this one as an example today, which is uh, my most recent work. So why do you want to use a grid pattern? Well, first off, it's important to match the proper uh, elements of the painting where it belongs. Otherwise, it's just not going to look as realistic. It's not going to look as accurate. And, <clears throat> when you make trying to make a reproduction, you want to try to go for as much accuracy as possible, especially if you have uh, a certain client and you're trying to sell this painting to. But um, anyways, with this one, let me show you what I did. I did um, originally I did an eight by I mean uh, originally it was a four by four pattern, which you can still see the dots on there, the intersections of the lines on there. But um, eventually the the painting became so complex, I realized that it apparently was necessary for me to um, make it into an 8x8 eight eight instead. So, what you see I did here was that I started off making a 4x4 four four on the top part, but um, all these details on there, all these figures and all these um, wrinkles and on the cloth and all the little details underneath the table, it just it made me realize that I had to make it an 8x8. Eight and so with the the way it actually helps me practically is it, it pushes the right things in the right direction so if i didn't use a grid if i relied on my own instincts on my own intuition which i always can't trust i would have probably made for example this guy go too far to the left or too far to the right I would have probably made this lamp go way too far to the left, up or down, and it would not have looked that good at all. And so with uh, this printout that I made, which I, I printed out at uh, FedEx Kinko's, by the way, for like $2.50 or $3, like a big color copy. And by the way, if you want, if you want to make these color copies on there, edit the photograph to make it a little bit brighter first because... Sometimes, sometimes the printer makes it way too dark, so you don't want to keep those colors as light as possible so you can get an understanding of what, what it, it really looks like. Anyways, <clears throat> this guy over here, I measured it so that way in the original block, in the original picture over here, you can see that um, his back is beginning in... Um, kind of slightly to the right of the midpoint over here in this block over here. So it kind of begins just slightly to the right side of the midpoint. So the way I transpose onto the canvas is he's slightly to the right between these two reference dots over here. These two sets of reference dots on this side and on that side. So a little more to the midway point. So I kind of, kind of guesstimate in a way the midway point and then I slightly veer it to the right. And that's just what I do with a lot of other stuff on there. And um, I use fractions. I would use thirds, quarters, halves. So um, what else? You could say that um, the edge of this painting, over the edge of this wall right there, you could say that it starts about just about one third of this block over here. You see that... Uh, the edge of it is one third inside the this block. Well, I transfer that onto the the canvas, and it's about one third, actually a little bit less than one third, and that's what I did. I actually got a I got a ruler just to make it a lot more accurate over here, and I made it one third, one third, and then I curved it onwards like that, and that's what I do. So the the sides, the edges, is it like I, I ask myself how far from the the edge is so and so. Like this guy's arm, how far is it off off to the the edge? Is it like maybe one quarter? Is it less than one quarter? 
I would say this guy's arm is about one sixth from the the fraction of the the block on there, and that's what you do with everything else on there. And this is just one example of what I did. Uh, eventually, when you do the the paintings, you're gonna you're gonna eventually paint over the the lines, and never paint over the dots. Never paint over the intersections of the 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 grid because that's the entire point of the grid is to keep these intersections the dots on there so keep these dots on there so you all you saw all my time lapse videos of my paintings you probably see a lot of dots on there some of you are probably wondering what they were well that's the intersections of the of the lines so keep these dots until you're pretty comfortable not using the the reference grid anymore so I'm gonna be keeping these dots for quite a long time on there because this painting is is pretty complex and. It's a little bit more tough than I expected it to be. So keep that in mind when you're using the reference materials. And so when you are initially measuring out the, the grid pattern with these reference materials, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's accurate, as proportional as possible. See this canvas here, this is a 24 by 36 inch canvas. And when you get a reference material, when you get a photograph, you're gonna make sure that uh, it's proportional to, the, to that, that fraction. So this is two feet by three feet. That's, it's a two, three ratio. And uh, <clears throat> when I printed out this, this photograph of the, of the painting, uh, luckily for me, it was already the, the proper proportions. It was um, proportional to 24 by 36 inches. And what I did, I, uh, I measured it out. I divided it up into four sections with my ruler. I use a, uh, let's see here. I just use a regular ruler right here and I, I measure it out. So I measured out with uh, centimeters because that way the metric system, it helps me make it a lot more accurate. And I divide it up into, into quarters. And, and of course, in this instance, I had to divide it up into eighths due to the complexity of the, of the nature of this painting. And um, I made sure it's proportional to fit. But if you end up finding a painting or a picture that's not proportional to the canvas size that you purchased, then you, you, all you do is start measuring it from, you just pick a part right here that eventually makes it proportional to the, the actual canvas. But luckily for me though, again, this is uh, proportional to what I actually have on here. And yeah, using grip patterns, it's, it makes it so much easier. Even if you're not using uh, a grid directly, what I do is I use reference materials for, for nature subjects. And in this photograph, you see that I didn't have any grid on there, but what I did was I, I used some of the elements. In one of my other paintings, I used this cluster of grass without using the other, other things, the trees, the, the background, so what I did was I used this cluster of grass and I, I painted it onto a, a, another landscape painting where I had other elements in it besides, besides these trees and other things. So you can mix, mix and match all you want to. And here's some other examples that I have of grid patterns that I used before. Here's a Chicago skyline painting that I did a while back. I, I used the four by four grid because it wasn't that difficult for me because you kind of have uh, a natural grid automatically on there from all the buildings, all the, the straight 90 degree angles on here that kind of served me as a pretty easy way to do some measurements on the fly. You know, for example, uh, like this building, the edge of this building begins about one third the distance between these two, the lines of this block over here. And that's just how I do it. That's that's how I uh, have the process of painting. It just takes a while. But anyways, guys, this is how you use grid patterns. Um, let me know in uh, the comments below if you have any other questions about grids, anything else I could mention that you want me to. And uh, this, is, this is still a pretty new YouTube channel. I mean, I could use all the feedback I could get, whether good or bad. Just give me the all the criticism. I could take it. Um, so yeah, just let me know what you think. Let me know any other suggestions that you have for other paintings that you want me to do. Any landscapes, landmarks, skylines, people, portraits, you name it. Let me know if you have any other ideas for paintings you want me to do. 
because that's what I do. I'll, I'll do a lot of reproductions. I do. I try to do original work. I just try to do a lot of different things. So click that like button, leave a comment below, and uh, if you want to, subscribe to that channel. Thank you.